Next, we've got Navjot Sawney, founder of the Washing Machine Project. This is a volunteer-led organization that seeks to help the women and girls who hand wash the clothes of 70% of the global population. Let's make some noise for Nav. Wow, very, very inspirational panel so far. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good, feeling good. How was lunch? Obviously a favorite for me. Yeah. <laughs> cool, so um, over the next 10 minutes or so, I am going to start by telling you about this lady here. Um, this is Divya, and um, over the next 10 minutes, I'm gonna share a story of how, how Divya changed my life and completely turned my life upside down and inspired me to to empower millions and millions of women just like her. Her, her name's Divya. But this is where it all started, uh, 1993. Uh, I was three years old in, in, this, in this picture. Um, uh, I was born in London and a very curious child. Uh, my dad was an aerospace engineer. He would take me to air shows and I'd be fascinated with how these big aircrafts would get into the sky. I'd come back home and I would take the toolbox out of the shed and break everything around me. And that used to really make my mum very, very angry. Um, but it sparked this kind of uh, imagination and this curiosity of, of, how things, of how things worked. I also joined Scouts. Um, and if anyone's been a part of the Scouting movement, um, it's a community-based organization, and it's all about giving back, and really taught me about selfless service and giving back from a very, very young age. And I think that's really, really important uh, theme that's run throughout my whole life. I went to um, Queen Mary University, and I studied aerospace engineering. Um, I actually failed my first year of aerospace and engineering, I got 35%. And I had to work so hard. Um, and by the end of it, I got about 79% and graduated top of my class. And I think the reason why is because I spent so much time in this library, um, up to 18 hours a day. And you can see by my face, I was so knackered by the end of it. And uh, the security guard used to take our belongings because we used to basically live there and uh, we used to make him really really angry i wanted to introduce you to my mum she came to the uk uh, in the 70s with five pounds in her pocket really really overqualified for the job that she went for in the uk and uh, she had to start from 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 the very very beginning uh, giving up her career in in india to marry my father here, and it was so. I was so proud uh, to 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 spend that day with her and, and graduate uh, in engineering, and and she was finally very happy. Two years outside of graduation, I landed one of the best graduate programs in the country, and it was for this company here. Uh, they used they make these really fancy vacuum cleaners and hand dryers and these straighteners that everyone wants nowadays. Um, but I realized about three years into my time at Dyson, I was, I was making vacuum cleaners for rich people. And I was so fed up of every day going into work and every bit of good engineering that I was doing was making higher profit margins for someone who's got so much money already and for products for people who have everything they've wanted in the world anyway. So I decided to quit my job and move to South India. And you can imagine how that conversation went with my mom, you know. As a, as a South Asian family, uh, it wasn't very good, trust me. But where did I end up? I ended up here in, in, in South India. Um, I lived on this street for a year and a half. And you can see here, that on this street, 
there's very humble surroundings. The kids aren't wearing shoes. There's open sewers, open defecation. The building isn't, isn't in the right way. So it's a very dangerous environment as well. That's, that was the reality of large parts of the world today in 2022. And in India, in South India, where I was for a year and a half, I was making these cook stoves, clean and efficient cook stoves for people who have to uh, use solid fuel to cook their food. So around 50% of the world's population have to walk over a mile to gather wood, come back, burn that wood, and make their food. And do you know who that affects? Majority women. Think of who takes up the unpaid labor in your household, who makes the doctor's appointments, who drops you to school, who washes the dishes, who cooks the food. It's often women. And this is unfair, and it needs to change. And so I, I used to make these cook stoves. On Monday, we'd have an idea. On Tuesday, we'd prototype the idea. On Wednesday, we'd put that idea into the field. And by Thursday, we'd have real-time feedback by the auntie down the road of why her roti is not puffing up properly, or her rice is burning. And we'd be able to make that change by Friday. And we made thousands and thousands of these cook stoves. This cook stove was a 10 pound cook stove that reduced the smoke emissions by 90% and fuel usage by 50%. It meant that those women didn't have to go to the forest every day and they had time back to educate themselves, to rest, to spend time with family or to work. And this story here of this lady, Aisha, whose husband died six months before this picture was taken, she uh, could no longer afford gas or electricity, so had to forage for wood to cook her food. And this is what it meant to someone like Aisha. But let's go back to the streets. You can see here open sewers, and that's Divya's daughter there. You can see here um, Suguma. Suguma is Divya's seven-year-old son. Suguma had an exam the next day, and there was no light, uh, no power, and he had to study. And that light that you see on the screen there was the flashlight on my phone, and it meant that he could have at least a chance to do well uh, at school the next day. So don't underestimate the, the power of one small LED bulb that I take for advantage all the time. This is Divya's mum collecting the wood from the local forest. And this is my other next door neighbor. Water was switched on for 15 minutes once a day. And she's filling up every pot, pan, and bottle that she could get her hands on for that day. So water anxiety was very, very real. And that's me in front of Divya's house. I promised her a manual washing machine to combat the 20 hours a week that she had to spend on hand washing clothes. Her eyes lit up. That was back in 2018, and we've never looked back since. I came back to the UK with that promise, and I started the washing machine project. And it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it does what it says on the tin. Uh, we make manual washing machines that save time, water, and effort for the millions of divyas right across the world. This problem is huge, and it disproportionately placed on women who use more than 40 liters of water per cycle in lakes, in streams, in buckets, and in places where water is such a precious and rare and rare source of and They do this for up to 20 hours a week. Now this is Divya 1.5. This is a, a manual crank handle washing machine that we created. It's here today, so please have a play. It not only washes your clothes, but it dries it. It spins at a 500 RPM. And We've sent around 250 machines out to Iraq and in Lebanon, and we've tested in India. And users love how ergonomic it is. It's a large drum capacity for larger families. And it saves 50% of water and 75% of time. We partner up with the UN and Oxfam 
to do our work. And partnerships are really, really important. You can't solve some of these problems alone. And collaboration is the way forwards. I wanted to share this story of a lady I met in a refugee camp called Kausek. Kausek is a 36-year-old Syrian refugee. She's been living in this refugee camp for 10 years. She has 10 children. And they are literally rotting away in this camp. There is no end in sight for Kausik and her children. And I'm so proud that although we can't solve all of Kausik's problems, there's this one element that we can support. And that's what, it, what matters. We've done so much research all over the world. Over 3,000 families uh, in 27 countries. And you can see here in the Philippines, that, that girl in the top left of the screen can't be older than 15 years old. Look at the posture. Look at where they're getting the water. Look at how they have to travel. Look at the action. And this is how we live. We're really lucky. You can see here again in Somalia. Look at the posture again. But this is how we live. And you can see here in Iraq, this lady six months pregnant. And this is how we live. I'm so lucky that we've had so much traction around the world. And it's just amazing to see uh, the, the idea and that promise that I made Divya has caught the imagination of so many people around the world. And my parting um, thoughts for you guys is don't feel like you're too small to make a difference in the world because you can uh, make change uh, for Divya and for Kausik. She was really embarrassed to, to see what she's inspired, but also very proud as well. So we're here to make impact by 2024. We're distributing 12,000 washing machines to 27 countries and positively impacting 100,000 people. But what comes next? Well, we want to become the Dyson of the humanitarian world. And there are so many problems around us for people that we can't see right now. And so we are going to become a world leading organization to solve some of the world's most pressing and humanitarian challenges. To go from this to this and then to this. I have a two minute video for you. Thank you very much. Today in Lebanon, in the Bekaa Valley, just 10 minutes away from the Syrian border. Uh, we're in a refugee camp here um, with uh, about 200 families. So there's about 1,000 people plus. They've been here for over five years, really don't have much. And the washing machine project is supporting them with manual washing machines. We are distributing these washing machines here and we're learning from these people so that we can feed it back into our future designs. These washing machines that we're providing save them time, water and effort of this back-breaking work compared to hand-washing clothes. نحن عائلة مكونة من 12 نفر ساكنين بمخيم بر الياس اسمه مخيم الياسمين صارنا فترة بنغسل على ايدينا انا عندي ثلاث بنات صبايا كبار نقعد الساعتين وثلاثة بنغسل على ايدينا وجع ظهر وجع اجرين وجع ايدين مصروف مواد مصروف ماي تعب فجأة هلا اجانا اختراع جديد الاخ جايب لنا اختراع جديد غسالة يدوية ما في مصروف ماي ما في مصروف دواء ما في تعب ما في وجع لا اجرين لا ظهر لا ايدين 
يعني كثير كثير اختراع بجنن Thank you so much to all of our supporters, all of our donors that make our work possible. Thank you.